Welcome to the Destiny Group Mentor School. This is class number six, and we're going to just start with a rehearsal. Uh, we have so far been sharing on the topic this 12 weeks of the purpose and vision of an ambassador of God's kingdom. That's y'all. Amen. We have to see ourselves that way. And we talked about in week number one, of course, we got started with week number one, but then we went into purpose. The next week we went into protocol, God's order. Then the next week we went into our path, the DNA. Then we went into prophetic mystery last week. And then tonight we're going to be talking about the kingdom principle of power and authority. It says there in Matthew 6, uh, verse 13, part B, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Jesus wasn't just listing a lot of superlatives. He was talking about a process. What we're seeing there is God's order. Because his kingdom is a government, not a religion. Now, again, it's a process, so the kingdom produces the power. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the kingdom that produces the power. Does that make sense? The power is literally the ability to manifest the kingdom. And we'll get more into that, the difference in authority and power. Power and authority are not synonymous. They are definitely distinguishable. So, thine is the kingdom, the governing authority. Thine is the power, the ability to manifest it. And thine is what? The glory. His is the glory, not ours. His is the glory. What is the glory? It's literally the application of the power. So you see the process? That is the kingdom. The authority that produces the power, the ability that produces the glory, his manifested presence. This actually matches up with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. He said he's given to the church gifts, administrations, and operations. We can match up the kingdom with administration, the power with the gifts, and the glory with the operations. God wants to manifest himself in the church, but not just for the church, but for the world. Mm -hmm. Now, the amazing thing about this, the reason why we're bringing this up is because all of that is in you. <laughs> wow. All of that is in you and me. But it's untapped for the most part. So let's look at this a little bit more. The kingdom is the authority that releases the power. Remember we talked about protocol? There's an order with God. The kingdom is the authority that releases the power. Now let me ask, let's give you all something here and maybe some of you there. If we keep putting off to the future the kingdom way up beyond the blue somewhere, how will we know his power? We may experience it but not understand it, right? Because a lot of people operate in the Holy Ghost anointing and power, but they don't understand why. This is why we've had a lot of revivals in years gone by. And I thank God for those revivals. Don't get me wrong. I thank God for what was accomplished in those revivals. Amen. But if they didn't continue, there was a reason why. Because they didn't understand that the power was to reveal the kingdom. 
The Greek word for uh, authority is azusia. Azusia. E-X-O-U-S-I-A. Literally, it's his nature. So everything God does is according to his word. Do we all agree? He doesn't do anything outside of his word. Everything he does now is confirming his word. Amen. Amen. So the exousia is the authority and the power that's going to result from that authority must first be a direct result of the nature of the author. Do you all see author in authority? Yes. Praise God. Our authority is not really our authority. It's his authority. Amen? That's why you should never doubt it. How many believe God can do anything? Then we should never doubt it. What we're doubting is ourselves. Because somehow we think it's our authority. But it's his authority manifesting his glory through us. Out of the exousia comes the dunamis. The Greek word for power is dunamis. This dunamis becomes our might. Because it's activated authority. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. It's activated authority, literally giving us confirmation of his ability in us. In Ephesians 3, 18 through 20, it says that God has made it to where we could comprehend with all saints what is what? The breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of God that surpasses our current understanding. And then he says, this is all according to the power that is working in us. And this is why we have these classes. This is why we have a passion to help discover the untapped power that's in his authority. He said, I want you to comprehend the breadth. What is the breadth? When you do a study on it, you see it's the dominion of territory God has given you. Did you know he's given you territory? So the breadth, if you want to write it down, God wants us to comprehend the breadth, the dominion of territory that it's the Father's good pleasure to give you in his kingdom. He said not only the breadth, but the length. What did he mean by that? Your sphere of influence. Then he said, I also want you to comprehend the depth. What is the depth? It's literally the border of your measure. And believe me, I talk uh, as God's given me the honor of counseling ministers, both emerging and seasoned leaders that have gone outside of their measure. And they've known shipwreck because they thought I got to do it all. You don't got to do it all. You got to do your measure. If you want to write this down, I don't think I put it on the page. Some of you there too. That your measure is literally your metron. <coughs> your metron. M-E-T-R-O-N. If you take the N away, you've got metro. That's what defines a city. Oh, my goodness. A metropolitan city is literally a uh, metro measure of government that is legal in that town. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have been given a metron. You and I have been given a metron. 
not only am I going to look at the breadth, the length, the depth, but I'm also going to see the height. Is the height somewhere beyond the blue? No. The height is literally your realm of authority. God is going to open some things for you at this season. Can you receive that prophecy? Amen. God is going to begin to open some breadth and length and depth and height to you that you didn't see. But now when you see it, you'll say, how did I miss it? The reason why we missed it is because we didn't have a kingdom concept. We had most of the time a religious concept instead of a governmental concept. Romans <laughs> chapter 8, verse 38. For I am convinced, it says in King James, persuaded, that neither what? Death, death nor death, life, life, nor angels, angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, See height? Mm -hmm. Nor what? Depth. Depth. Nor any other creature. Now he just listed this and calls it creatures. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, this is what I want to show you. What he listed here was the way the devil tried to make it look. The devil tried to say you can only go this high. You can only go this low. This deep. Not only that, but notice he says when when the enemy, the devil, crooked, made things crooked, note what he did. He lists death first, then life. You see that in the list there? Mm -hmm. The devil tried to make death dictate our life. Mm. That's right. So people are always thinking about death, whether they admit it or not, in one way or another. Do you ever notice all the commercials on TV are about everybody must be sick? <laughs> because they say death will somehow define what your life is. The devil says you can only go so high because of your history. And you can only go so deep because you're dumb or whatever. He lists here everything that the devil did to bring a very crooked perception of who you are. So in other words, the enemy always tried to limit us from seeing ahead and blinded so that we wouldn't know the truth. And the truth is... I'm persuaded that none of that can keep me and separate me from the love of God and His call on my life. Amen. Amen. And He called them those creatures because they're, they're strategies of the devil to try to make you think conventionally about who you are. This is why we need to see the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Yes, we preach His crucifixion. We preach the cross as a crossroad. We preach that he died and rose again. All those things. But those are avenues to get us to our understanding of the kingdom of God. His government in us. I'm preaching. Hallelujah. God's given us four measures of power. And we get this from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And I'll just ask you to look that up later. God gives us the power of character. A lot of people like to skip that one. But you can't skip it. God's given us the power of character and stature and a specific office and an assignment. Amen? But it's not always appreciated by people. But there are people who get intimidated by you. There'll be people that get uh, competitive with you. There are people that actually will try to bring you down because they think that puts them up. But our, our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, right? So we have to... The, how did Jesus deal with these people? 
we need to first of all understand that titles don't produce power. Hold on, folks out there. Titles don't produce power. And if misused, those titles will expose your lack of authority. Titles describe function and integrity in position, but a title will never describe the character of a person. So you can't go on your title alone to be your character or lack of it. Some pa uh, preachers that <coughs> have fallen, and I pray for them, were actually used greatly in a lot of meetings because God honors his word. So they had the position of preaching the word, but they didn't have the character to match. And eventually got exposed. Jesus was often mocked by, I say elders, but the Pharisees. But it did not increase or decrease him. We have to ask ourselves constantly, wait a minute, why am I letting the opinions of people increase or decrease me? I need to know the authority I have has nothing to do with me. It's him. So we have to, at some point, recognize, wait a minute, the power and authority I have is from the author of the book. <laughs> and I don't have to be swayed. Now, we need, in the multitude of counsel, there's wisdom. Amen. We need to stay open and be teachable. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about the opinions of people. We have to, we have to grow up and make sure that we, at some point, recognize you don't increase me and you don't decrease me. But if you ever want to know how to deal with people that you know are just trying to box you into a corner, most of the time, check it out for yourself, most of the time Jesus answered their question with another question. Yeah. <laughs> the power must always release the glory of the king. Amen? Amen. The power must always release the glory of the king. The glory is the Hebrew word kabald. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And thine is the kabald. The kabald literally is the weight of splendor. The Greek word is doxa, where we get our word doxology. The revealed presence, person, nature, and purpose of God. In the Old Testament, he revealed himself a lot in nature. Burning bush, the Ten Commandments on the mountain, the waters. And right up to where Jesus paid the price for us, uh, he also performed things outside. When Jesus was baptized, what happened? The Spirit came in the form of a dove. But once the Holy Spirit was revealed to come in us, now, although he's still all over the place, he's still, all creation is waiting on what? The manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, now everything he does comes through us. This is why we need to make sure we understand our purpose, our vision, our destiny, our assignment in the height, depth, length, and breadth that he wants us to comprehend that is unsearchable. It's <laughs> past our searching. Amen. So 2 Peter 1.17 speaks of God's voice coming from the excellent, ever exceeding glory. He says he has opened himself from glory to glory, meaning he doesn't go backwards. You think this glory is wonderful? Anybody ready for a greater glory? Amen. <laughs> what he reveals to you next will make what he did seem like, oh my gosh, where was I? Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. And it's not going to happen someday. It's happening right now. He is constantly moving you forward. Mm -hmm. You can't get comfortable. 
the Holy Ghost is a comforter, but not to make you comfortable in your flesh. Yeah. He's always going to be causing you to move forward. That's why Jesus said, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I love you all. God bless. Please share this with friends. Where This is week six. We're coming up on week seven. Amen. And as we all say, to the king. Yeah.